Hi everyone, it's Jerry. Round 10 from the 41st Chess Olympiad 2014 had in the women's section China paired up with Spain. Playing at board 1 for China is the current women's world chess champion Yi Fan Ho and she was paired with Spain's Sabrina Vega Gutierrez. Let's have a look at it. Yi Fan opens with E4, Sabrina replying with Sicilian. Knight f3, knight c6, and with bishop b5 we enter the Nimzovich rosselimo attack. Knight f6, and now white goes for the bishop-knight exchange, giving up the bishops in exchange for damaging the structure. White will make sure that this light square bishop is kept under control, and white will do that by placing pawns on light squares. d3. Black prepares kingside fianchetto, h3. This is not designed at preventing the pin, I believe, inasmuch as preventing knight g4. The queen bishop would like to play to e3 without being kicked, so that white can set up a battery along the c1, h6 diagonal to exchange, eventually, dark square bishops. Additionally, this h3 move is providing the f3 knight a pocket, so that there is a later f4 pawn move or pawn break, as in this game. Okay, so it's bishop g7, knight c3, black castles, bishop e3, there is a punch being thrown at c5, b6 defends queen d2, preparing again bishop h6. e5, placing a pawn in the center, having a, an additional grip over d4, Ideally, this knight on f6 would like to arrive on that square, but it's going to take some time in order to do that. And this pawn can't, well, it could be captured, but it really shouldn't be captured, as this would allow knight takes e4. And if the knight is taken immediately, well, who really benefits by having one less pawn on the board? Black, as this is only going to help out the mobility of the bishops. And if instead of that variation, taking on e4, suppose knight takes f7, knight takes queen, knight takes queen, and we go into this line. Well, at the end of this one, white is actually up a pawn, but it's hard to really see how that's so great, as these bishops are in an ideal environment, functioning on adjacent diagonals, placing an enormous amount of pressure on the white queenside structure, and it's super awkward to have to defend the c2 pawn. Having to devote a rook like this to its defense is certainly not ideal. If you're concerned about getting the material back, keep in mind you can always cash out and scoop up the c4 pawn if you really wanted to. Okay, we don't go in that direction. My main point here is that knight takes e5 is simply not helpful to white. Bishop h6 instead. Queen to e7. This move is not there just to watch over e5, but to also watch over c5. And that might seem a little bit ridiculous because clearly we have a b6 pawn that is watching over that point. But it's important to be aware of an additional pawn break that white has in this position. I have only so far s spoken of knight h2 and f4. However, there is also this pawn break with a3 and b4. And when this is played, or if it is played, let's say it's it played right away, just to illustrate my point. If this advance gets in, notice the situation black is kind of in. You don't really want to take on this square because you're helping out the rook and you're also maybe helping out the c3 knight because maybe this B pawn is not finished moving. Maybe he's going to come up to B5, make this C6 pawn flinch, and then jump into a nice central post. And if you're not to capture, let's say after B4, let's say you don't capture, well, keep in mind again, that's one of the reasons you would want to have a piece around to watch over C5, because certainly if pawn takes on this square, making another passing move, if pawn takes, you don't want to capture in this direction. This is very ugly to your queenside structure. One last note regarding this idea of a3 and b4. Suppose black simply says, you know what, I'm going to stop b4 altogether. 
by playing this a5 advance well notice it's um, doing one thing it's defending b4 but it's no longer doing what defending b6 and so there can maybe at some point be some pressure against b6 and black would have to devote a piece to defending that square okay we don't go in that direction eventually we do see e3 in this game we don't even get to see b4 but nevertheless it's an important idea to be familiar with the queen is not there to just watch over e5 but to also watch over c5 okay white castles black goes for their little journey eventually looking for e6 and from there there's some interesting options d4 and f4 this is not the only path knight h5 is also available you might regard this as a more aggressive approach as it's uh, closer to the white king position however maybe this knight cannot make use of f4 or it could be challenged let's say knight e2 and maybe he's not going to get to his uh, post on e6 so easily but certainly if he's playing to e8 there's not going to be a way to stop him from getting to c7 and ultimately e6 so knight e8 it is and now a3 preparing this idea maybe at some point and we have knight c7 notice at this point white is not helping black out by capturing the bishop as this knight would have absolutely no problem with going in a different direction to get to e6 we would just have this and I believe white is helping black out helping the black knight out so only after the knight moves to c6 do we have this capture on g7 and after the recapture we have knight e2 so this is clearing the way for maybe a b4 advance since the queen would have an eye on the b4 move and well you can't really get into this uh, b5 or d5 squares it's a little bit of a repositioning idea with knight e2 it's also helping to facilitate the eventual f4 pawn break as you can expect knight e6 and well white will need a minor piece around to get this advance in so following up f6 and now knight to h2 so with this black is simply reinforcing the e5 square you couldn't jump into this square just yet as you'd be dropping e5 so f6 first knight h2 and now knight e6 this is a, a certain there's a similarity here with both knights in this position they're both on the c3 f3 squares classic squares and from there where did they go they made a similar shift they went to e2 and they went to h2 this one here again clearing the way for now this f4 advance knight e6 f4 is in e takes f knight takes f and we enter with this pawn structure there is one other way that we could or one other pawn structure to be aware of if instead of capturing here if black simply sits and keeps this pawn on e5 let's say bishop d7 maybe this is at the end of the day not a structure black wants to work with as maybe this e5 pawn is more more so of vulnerability as an example knight f3 knight d4 takes takes maybe we could have some pressure against the e5 square there's already some potential tactics in the position with knight takes e5 in this position as an example if the rook played here to defend this point well you're actually able to still take after rook takes rook there's queen takes rook and we would have white falling up in that manner my point here is that black simply doesn't want to have to deal with any potential pressure against a pawn on the e5 square so instead of trying to keep a pawn on e5 black gives up the center by playing e takes f knight takes knight takes rook takes so that the other rook can finally double bishop e6 white doubles black is now opposite the queen so white gets out of that queen c3 a very active post this pawn is in a pin there's also pressure against c5 so maybe this is close to happening 
And what next? Black simply tucks the bishop away, goes back home, clears the way for the queen to watch over e5. And keep in mind that it's not just, you know, it's not, why not go to g8 in other words? You're not just wanting to have the queen watch over e5, but you want to still make sure that the bishop is keeping a watchful eye over g4. Playing something like this, you're already dead. Knight g4, this pawn is getting hit with every white piece. And there's just not going to be a good defense. Something like rook d4, well, you're already smashing through. If rook d6, there's e5. So you don't want to go in this direction, of course. If you're going to get out of the queen's way, still keep a close eye over g4. Rook to f2. And this, I believe, is paving the way for knight to f1. And then knight to e3, and who knows where he would go from there. Maybe c4, maybe g4, maybe a timely knight f5 with some crazy tactics. Um, let me point out that there is an improvement, I believe, on the black side from this position. Instead of dr dropping the bishop back, I think that this was an interesting try on the black side, playing c4. If this pawn is captured, keep in mind there's queen c5, and this pawn will be won back and black has eliminated one of their doubled pawns and is doing quite all right, probably even the preferred side in this position. If instead of pawn takes, pawn push, which seems like everything you would want, having an ideal center, well, notice how these pawns could be subject to, subjected to some pressure. The bishop dropping back now, and, well, this rook is now tied to the defense of the e4 pawn, since there's not a pawn around on d3 to defend. So if queen takes pawn, in other words, there can now be the typical deflection move, kicking the rook from defensive e4, and then you could scoop up the pawn. And now this bishop would eventually really like to get to the d5 square. Okay, we don't have that. We don't have this pawn push to try and allow black to have some target in that of the white pawn structure, but rather bishop c8. And now after rook 1 to f2, opening this square up for the knight to reposition, we have, um, after rook 1 to d2, we have rook to, or queen to d6, excuse me. And if you'd like to at this moment here, pause the video and see what you would play as white. Okay, the move played here was rook takes f6. So... This is actually a big blunder, queen to d6, because of this tactical shot. Rook takes f6. Rook takes rook is now running into e5, the move played in the game. And this piece will be won back. In fact, we enter an imbalance position from this point on. What black tries is rook takes, pawn takes queen, and the rook returns. So we're working now with two rooks versus a queen, essentially. If instead of that, Black wanted to go in a different direction. As an example, after rook takes f6, after rook takes rook in e5, what do you do after queen to d4? What, well, what would follow is pawn takes rook, and there's a few options for the king. This is probably best, as king f8 could run into queen d2, and the queen now has a fast track to h6 with check. Not a good idea. If king f7, well, he's more vulnerable to now knight checks. As an example, still queen d2 looking for not only this idea, but now knight f3 with tempo, and then he's within striking distance of the king. So that's probably not a good square for the king. Going to g8 instead, runs into an f7 check, king here, and now queen to e1, threatening all sorts of tactics. Queen to e8 being one, looking to promote next. Just as an example, passing move, if a6, you could promote immediately and then follow up with queen to e7. If black tries to defend with rook to f8, there can follow knight f3, queen d6, stopping queen checks here, and now knight to e5. You have to try to get rid of this pawn, bishop e6, and now queen to c3, setting up a discovered check. The best that black can pretty much do is... Stop the discovered check with queen d4. You could take the queen, grab this pawn. After the smoke clears, white is up two pawns, 
and white is going to win this with no issues. So we don't enter this. We don't enter at this moment right here after e5, the move played in the game. We don't see queen d4, but rather rook takes. Pawn takes queen, rook to, rook to f6, and now queen to e5, and it's really a, a tough road ahead. White doesn't let this one slip from here on out. The queen and knight tandem are just too good. A vulnerable king position, and it's very awkward for these rooks to do anything active. And they always have to stay in contact with one another, otherwise the queen is probably going to pick one of them off. So black gets that pawn back, but white grabs the pawn on a7, and is it's really downhill from here. Knight getting working, looking to get to a strong post on e5, maybe even the g5 square at some point, looking to converge on h7. It's just not enough coordination on the black side. This is not a good environment for the black pieces. The queen is too, the queen and knight are too strong. So finally the b pawn is picked up. Queen b7. This uh, bishop is going to be won soon. Once we get to this type of position right here, there's just simply no hope. All these pawns are pretty much always going to be immune from capture because of forks in some way or another. As soon as there's a disconnect between the rooks, one of them will fall to a fork. So these pawns get pushing soon enough. The only point that white has to be cautious of is g2, and the queen will not be inconvenienced at all with having to defend g2. We'll soon see that. First a check. Queen is in a perfect spot. One of the central squares watching over here. If rook takes here, you pick your favorite way to do it. There's a fork. There's probably a ton of other ones. So pawns just keep marching. Keeping a close eye over g2. That's all you need to do at this point is white. Some more checks being thrown in. These pawns continue to march. And actually after a5, black simply throws in the towel. There's nothing to do about stopping these pawns from advancing. This is the only concern. White has it covered. Black is dead. Rook takes here can be met with queen c8. King h7. Queen c7, and well, there's a fork. If king here, you get the idea. You could actually still just promote. And you're not even in the, at this point right here entering uh, a position where it's queen versus rook. Because, again, forks around every corner. And he's going to promote. We're going to have two queens versus a rook soon enough. But as it was in this game, after a5, black simply had enough and threw in the towel. So... Uh, that's all for this video. As always, I hope you got something out of it. Take care. Bye. It may seem very tempting to want to just do a routine move like castle right away. And while that might be a good move, why not maybe make a more flexible move like queen d2? Maybe you have thoughts of castling queenside, or at the very least,